Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the next tutorial on grep. Now grep is an amazingly powerful command. It can be used for finding text within a file or from the output of the previous command. The basic syntax is what you're searching for and the file you want to look in. You don't have to specify a file if you're using an output of a previous command and I'll come on to that later in the video. I could grep for the text Romeo in Shakespeare Romeo.txt and it will highlight every line with the word Romeo in. Out of interest, how many lines is that? 124 out of 4,579, anyway. Now to look at some of the basic arguments you can specify. So grep in its default form is case sensitive. So as you can see, lowercase Romeo produces no results. However, if we were to put dash I for ignore case in, then as you see, it now produces results. Dash V is an inverse match, so it will grep everything without the word Romeo in. See, there's no Romeo on that screen there. And how many lines is that? I um, can't remember what it was earlier, but hopefully that maths adds up. Now I want to go across to a different folder to demonstrate the next feature, which is recursive lookup. So grep dash R is recursive. So the term I'm trying to look for this time is sys hyphen group. You can either specify a folder or it will do the lookup of the folder you're currently sat in. So pushing across the dash CSS folder gives those results. Whereas doing grep dash R from the folder I'm sat in produces a wider selection of results. You might want to do some editing of these files so it would be helpful to know the exact line number where the text appears. For that you can use the argument dash n. So dash rn is recursive and line number. And now I have the line numbers of the respective files where the term sysgroup appears. And in terms of using grep on the output of a previous command, for example, if I do ps-a, list all processes running on my system. Now let's say I'm looking for the process of Dolphin, but it does appear there on the screen at PID 7357, but just to show it working, 7357. It will produce more results if I'm looking for something like Kworker, quite a lot more as it turns out. But now across to the more advanced usage of grep, and that it can take regex statements. It's a method of building up a string where you can specify character ranges, quantify how many times a term should appear, or use if statements. It does take a lot to learn, and there's not really much I could do justice in this short video, but I will show you some of the terms. Now let's go back to the Shakespeare play. Let's look at how many lines have Romeo or Juliet in. So using the pipe to specify or, and I need to group these two words together, so using the brackets for that, using the curved brackets I should specify. Now I don't think this will work on its own. No, it will not. Well, Bash needs certain characters escaped, like the curved brackets and the pipe. So grep, Romeo or Juliet, will this work? No. No, what we need to do is use extended grep. I know I'm making things more and more confusing here, but grep dash capital E, or the command E grep, will allow me to use the full character set here and carry out a search for Romeo or Juliet. And here we go. Lines with Romeo or Juliet are listed here on the screen. WC-L, 169. I think that's a few more, isn't it? I hope it is. Let's make use of some of these meta sequences. So taking a look at PS-A, or the top output of it, you'll see that the PID numbers actually start off very low. They actually start off at number one. So can I get to that kind of output with crep? Yes. So in its simplest form, I'm looking for a space, a digit, and a space, which gets you numbers one to nine. Those of you who are familiar with regex might be wondering why I'm using the double brackets. That's because bash actually requires them for these meta sequences. It's a very crude form of regex and may actually be missing a number of features that you may be more used to. So you can't just go looking for regex examples from PHP or JavaScript because those won't necessarily be applicable to bash, as I know from bitter experience. The alternative way of writing digit is to literally specify a range of zero to nine and I only need one square bracket for that. This is actually only going to be 10 to 99. Yes, because I've asked for two numbers here. To be honest, there's so many different ways I could do this. Putting a question mark here will specify I want either zero or one of those to appear for just this square bracket here, which I'll just separate to highlight what I'm talking about. 
So zero or one times for that to appear. And I do apologize, this is a very complicated thing to get your head around. Talking of head, let's just take a look at the first 15 lines. Oops, I've made a mistake. Might be because we need egrep. So you can see now we have one digit and two digits. There is a different way of doing it with the curly braces to specify a range, say between one and two characters. This is fun here. This is fun trying to remember what you have to escape. There. Let me demonstrate another argument, the use of dash x, which will specify that I'm looking for a full line match. Because if I run this now, it won't do anything. The line starts with a caret, has a number of spaces at the beginning, let's say one or more spaces at the beginning, use the plus. Then I'm looking for a digit which occurs, uh, so what am I specifying here, between one, uh, let's say one and two times, then a space. So running that now, ooh, still doesn't do anything. But, but that's because I need to finish the line off. So we have any character appearing any number of times. And to be technically correct, I should put the dollar in at the end. So that specifies the entire string I'm looking for. So I'm looking for a space appearing one or more times, a number appearing once or twice, a space, and then any character matching any number of times. So that gives us the result of more than one space, one or two numbers, a space, and matching the entire line there. And to show another example on the character ranges to use, so I'm taking a group consisting of any character with 0 to 9, A to Z, a colon, and an escaped dash. And that's appearing any number of times. And we can see the only things not highlighted here are the uppercase letters and the dots in the file name, so the full stop in the file name. If I, want to short, if I want to shorten the range on the alphabet, I could do something like, let's say, C to Z. So that was a look at some of the features of grep in Linux. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.